Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to have a play around with something called a flat iron steak. Now I've heard great things about this steak before, but I've never ever seen it in the shop. But I managed to get hold of one from my butcher. I've now butchered that out and I've got these three amazing steaks and that's what we're going to play with today. First thing we're going to do is carne asada. We're also going to make an amazing chimichurri to go over our steak. Now carne asada basically needs you to marinate this steak. Now if you've got an hour, great. If you've got four hours, perfect. So first thing we're going to do is put the marinade together. So basically get yourself a clean bowl and then with some coriander or cilantro as it's called in America. I've got a spoon in there. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I'm not sure you always get a free spoon in it, but uh, you know, I've got one, I've no idea how that got in there. So, a little trick with your coriander. If you roll it up, so it comes like that, there's a bunch. If you roll it up, twist it a little bit into kind of like a bit of a cigar, I guess. Like that. And then when you finally chop it, it chops really, really nicely. So we want to get a really, really fine chop on this. The reason being is because of marinade, we want to get as much flavor out of it as possible. And that's the reason why we're using the stalks and everything. And you see on the first chop, that's come up really nice. It's quite fine. And then with a few kind of rough chops, we can get that to the point that we want. So let's stick that in the bowl first. And then we need to add the zest and juice of one lime. If you haven't got yourself a little microplaner, do. It's really helpful. So, a little trick. So, give it a roll first. And what that does is breaks up all the fibres in the actual lime. Then we're going to zest it next. It's a lot easier zesting it while it's still like whole rather than, you know, if you cut it in half or you've already squeezed it. And don't worry about getting everything off of it. Just get as much of the zest as you can off. Then, and then you're going to add the juice of one lime. Now I got this when I brought some Havana Club tequila, and I absolutely love it. It's such a nice little tool. So stick the lime in like that, give it a squeeze, and you will get so much juice out of there and it leaves it nice and empty. So if you ain't got one of these, get one of these as well, because it's an absolute legend. And get yourself some tequila while you're there. Sorry, juice of one lime. So juice of one lime. Also then we've got about two tablespoons of soft brown sugar, that goes in. This is actually three cloves of garlic, but I've cut in half just so I can get it in my mincer. Oh, I'm just gonna chuck it straight in. So in the mincer, just squeeze those in. Last one. So that's three cloves of garlic. Then we want about a teaspoon of ground cumin. So it's about that much. And that gives it a really nice kind of like warmth to a nice flavour, a nice background heat as well. So next thing you need is soy sauce. Now I use this mushroom one. I use it on my briskets, on my beef short ribs. Amazing. Got a really kind of like a nice kind of like umami flavour as well as the salt and the soy. It's really good. So we want about two tablespoons of that. About that much. And then we want. I'm gonna do it. Got gloves on. Come on. There we go. Got it. So you need about. Let's say about about four tablespoons of olive oil and then we're just going to give that a bit of a mix up oh yeah smells amazing now if you like anything you know kind of like you want more garlic in it or you like it a bit more salty you can play around with it but these are kind of like your base ingredients of what you want for your marinade then we're going to get our 
steak. All the grain is running this way, so when we cut it, we're going to cut across. But you can see this looks absolutely gorgeous, and it's got some really nice come up marbling that side as well. So we're just going to stick our steak in and give it a good old mix around. Like I say, if you've got an hour, great, but if you've got four hours, perfect. So this is going to go in the fridge for four hours. If you haven't got four hours, an hour will do. Just kind of do it as much as you possibly can do. I wouldn't go over four hours because it just gets a bit too strong. Um, perfect. Right, let's put this in the fridge. Right, so I've got some beautiful wit and flame charcoal on. This stuff, you haven't tried it. It's expensive, but it is really well worth it. The actual lumps of charcoal, fantastic, and it burns so cleanly. So while that's going up to temperature, I want to make a chimichurri sauce to go over the next bit of our flat iron steak. So all the ingredients obviously are going to be listed below. So get yourself a little bowl, and then you're going to put all these ingredients in. So you want about a handful of flat leaf parsley and try and cut that up as finely as you can. This is why I love that chimichurri. You've got so many fresh herbs in here. Just absolutely gorgeous. And across the steak, man, it's, it's so hard to beat this. So flat leaf parsley in. Now, not everyone uses basil, but if you put a, just a small amount of basil in, I don't know, it just brings this really beautiful, there's a, a kind of like an additional, just a layer, it just really works well. So get yourself some fresh basil. You don't want too many stalks in it if you can avoid it, you just really want the leaves on this one to put that in. So next is some fresh oregano, and again we're just going to take the leaf part of this. Because you're going to put it over the steak, you kind of want to make sure that you can't get too much woody stuff in there. So about a handful there, about a cup or half a cup I guess. And then as well as fresh oregano, I also use some dried oregano. If you can't get fresh, just increase the quantity of like dried oregano that you use. And you probably want about a teaspoon of oregano in there. Then we're going to get two cloves of garlic. And just chop these in half so I can get them into my crusher. those in. Perfect, I love the smell of fresh garlic. Then some chilli flakes, you can use fresh chillies as well, if you want to chop them up relatively fine you can do, but I quite like using chilli flakes, just convenience and it gives that nice bit of background heat. So you've got about half a teaspoon there, or if you want it higher, add more. Then we're going to get some paprika, and I thought for it, out. now. I've not brought a spoon out, don't do this with your expensive knives, it's not a good idea. But you want about a teaspoon paprika, so I'm getting about that much of a knife. I probably should have gone in and got another spoon, but you know, <laughs> you've got to improvise sometimes. So next I'm going to get some salt, and this is some Cornish salt, but it's smoked, just adds that extra dimension, and we're just going to add like a pinch of salt. Same goes to pepper, again, I will use 16 mesh pepper in absolutely everything, but you just want a pinch of pepper. And then when it comes to red wine vinegar, you kind of want to bet about two tablespoons. It's about that much. Now when it comes to olive oil, and I suddenly realised I do need a spoon because I've got to mix this. The fun of recording at the end of your garden. Right, I've got a spoon. So with olive oil, but basically what I'm going to do is just keep out of breath now. Add in a bit, give it a mix, and it's all about getting that right consistency. So a bit more. Oh, I just love it. Well, that you got the spices, the fresh herbs are so so fragrant. So I've done quite a big batch today, so actually it's used a bit more olive oil than what I would normally do, but I'm just doing enough to serve it, because I'm showing you guys for this. But that's the sort of consistency that you want. And you see as that goes over the steak, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. I like it pretty coarse, but if you want to, you can kind of like chop it up more. But actually I really quite like that sort of texture that you get from it. Right, so we're going to put that to the side. Now, with chimichurri, 
if you can leave it for like an hour fantastic but don't generally not overnight um, I've done it before overnight and I don't know sometimes it goes it, it's nice sometimes it's not so just be a bit wary of it and because it's so easy and quick to do to be honest, there's no reason why you can't just do it before you need it so we're going to put that to one side and turn our attention to our next bit of steak so as I showed you in the clip where I butchered this there's two different ways of actually taking off flour uh, flat and steak. This is where I've taken off the entire strip in one go and this is where I've done the tall small one plus obviously we've got the other side of this um, but this is a bit too big so I'm just going to cut this in half and I'm going to season all four of these the same way so one we're just going to eat plain and we're just gonna, I just want to see what the actual flat and steak tastes like and then the other one we're going to have the chimichurri on it so um, I'm going to but I am going to season them exactly the same it is quite simple the way I do it so I'm going to get a decent amount of salt and then pepper followed by garlic granules And then the final thing that I like to do, and this is mushroom powder. So you can easily get this on Amazon, but it's just like a dusting of the garlic powder all over. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Okay, I'm just going to let those sit aside for five minutes. And we're going to have a look at how our carne asado turns out. And you can see, look at that. That looks incredible. It smells amazing. Wow, I'm really looking forward to that. Right, okay, so I'm just going to put that back in just for a minute, wait until the coals get up really screaming hot, and then we're going to cook all these steaks off. Right, first one I'm going to put on is carne asada because it's a little bit thicker, and I want plenty of char on this, so I'm not worried about any flames. And on the other side, I'm going to put our normally seasoned steak. Now, they're not thick steaks, so they're not going to take a huge amount of time to come out cook through. But I just want that beautiful char on the outside. I want a medium in the middle. So, the time being, I'm just going to let that first sear because the first time you put any steak on any grate, that's when you're going to get the best sear, the best colour. And as soon as you've moved it, the grate's cooled down a little bit, so you're not going to get as good a sear unless you've kind of got room to move it around completely. But I'm just going to leave these to sear for a bit. You can see you've got some beautiful char on this. It's time to take these off. And look at that. That looks incredible. Let's take that off and let that chill. So these are rested for about 10 minutes now and literally I cannot wait. The smell is incredible. The first one I'm gonna slice up is our carne asada. Oh, it just looks incredible. I can't wait for this. Now look at that, that is absolutely beautiful, and look, <laughs> and that beautiful and blush all the way through, I've got to give it a try, oh man, <laughs> that was incredible. That marinade, the garlic, the soy, the sugar. Oh, that is beautiful. If you've not tried this, you definitely need to. Right, I'm gonna slice it up. Look at that. So, so beautiful. I'm gonna slice up, got a bit of meat juice here, no wrong with that. And then I'm gonna slice up this. Mm. 
So this is just our salt and pepper. I'm gonna eat some of our chimichurri and try that as well. Oh, come on. It's definitely got some more chew to it, but the flavor is incredible. Oh, and with that chimichurri, amazing. I absolutely love it. Now, let's just try the steak on its own. So this is just the flavor of the steak, nothing else. Yeah, that is a beautiful bit of steak. Got some gorgeous flavor in there. It might be a little bit of work to get hold of, but if you've got a nice friendly butcher that'll do it all for you, happy days. But the flavor on that is incredible. So if you have not tried flat iron steak, I 100% recommend it. Whether we do the chimichurri or the carne asado, amazing. Actually, all three are just awesome. So if you haven't tried it, please go and do it. And also, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check out this video where i show you everything i wish i knew when i first started cooking briskets till next one see you then